Hey guys, Mr. Mupik here back with another video, and today I am here covering what I said I would do in my last video, and that is go over the self-resetting versions of these logic gates here. So if you've not seen the previous video, I will link you down in the description below. You have to have seen it in order to really understand what's happening, so I would highly recommend going to watch that real fast if you haven't. But I went over the basic, simple, non-self-resetting versions of these three logic gates, the AND gate, OR gate, and the NOT gate. So we're going to not really dive into their specific examples of self-resetting gates, but I'm just going to sort of scratch the surface of what self-resetting gates are and kind of how they work. So I'm actually going to be using this gate in particular. I will leave their actual, I'm not actually going to show off what the self-resetting version of the AND gate is, but more or less of an overly complicated version of it to show off some of these specific um, examples of these concepts over here. So, I for a later video, I'll actually cover the specific examples, but today we're going to be sort of doing an introduction, if you will, to the self-resetting logic gate. So, this is what that AND gate was, self-resetified, if, if, that, if that's not really a word, but that's what I'm going to call it, because it's obviously completely different, it's way more complex, it's so much more complicated, there's so much more things going on. So. Like I said, this is really just an overly complicated version of a self, uh, self-resetting AND gate. It can be much simpler, much more compact, and not everything so crazy like it looks, because there definitely is a lot of craziness going on, and I'm actually going to do my best to explain somewhat of it, but um, it's got all the, the same things. We've got our two inputs here, and with the AND gates, like I said in the last video, they can only you can only get an output once both inputs are triggered, so this is what our output is going to be this specific pig here once it travels along these rails and bounces on back that will represent an output so I'm actually going to just show it off I've tried to I've actually recorded myself tried to explain it but it didn't really work out because it sounds like I'm just uh, just talking about a bunch of gibberish and you can't really understand anything that's anything that I'm saying because I don't know how to put it I don't know how to explain it so what I just did was trigger input a so as you can see the cart has already looped back around to its original position, but we did not get an output. I don't know if I was in a view where you could actually see the output, but it was not triggered. And so that was input, input A. Input A was just triggered. And now that we trigger input B, then we will get an output. As you can see, there's our output right there. And we have got our input A and input B carts back where they were. Self reset id. So that's what that is. We can actually switch these up, and if we wanted to do um, input B first, then we can go ahead and do that. As you can see, we will not get an output until both of them are, both of them are triggered, and that's just the way the AND gates are. Input input one and input two have to go have to be triggered in order to get an output. So we just did input B or input two. I keep switching those up, so that's probably making things more confusing than it needs to be. But we just did input B, and as you could have seen, if I if you were paying attention, uh, we did not get an output until we do this. And so there is our output right there. Now this is super complicated. Like I said, way more uh, way more complicated than it needs to be. And that's what I'm going to do. And probably my next video, um, I'm going to cover what the actual or what I would recommend to use for an AND gate, a self-resetting AND gate, OR gate, and a NOT gate. I might split it up because the NOT gate's a little bit more complex, but the OR gate is super, super simple. So who knows what I'll do, but expect that probably for the next video. But I'm going to sort of try to dive into what's happening, and I'll also I will leave a map downloaded in the description below in case you guys are actually interested and would like to try out for yourself what's actually, uh, or this gate. So be sure to go download that if you would like. So. Really, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to actually explain this as much as I could because it's super confusing and I just don't know how to put it. But in simplified ways, we have got a minecart diverter for each input. So if we were to go, or actually, yeah, here's our here's our minecart diverter for input A, and here's our minecart diverter for input B. The diverter diverts the carts that are that come in contact with it to the right or to the left, depending on the position of this minecart here in the middle of the diverter. So in original position, the diverter connected to input A, which is the one right here, the if it were to connect with it, the input the input would travel to the left. And along this rail down here, it will go down to the bottom and switch the diverter connected to input B 
out of its original position so that it will not go up and trigger this one, but yet it will go straight to the output and trigger the output and then come back to its to its spot. So in their original positions, they will go not to the output, but to the other diverter to switch it to the output, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So if I were to click this and put A right here, it will go right here, switch this, or it'll go to the left, and actually down here behind the cart, switching it to the opposite position that it is originally, so that the cart will actually travel to the left and not to the right, which the right would be the way that it would originally travel. It will travel to the left instead because I have triggered input A, and this going to the left um, just goes straight to the output, and then it comes back, resets itself, and goes, and the cart comes back to where it was. And so, um, once this travels down to the input B, and affects that minecart, it just loops back around, resets its own minecart, resets its own minecart, and the diverter comes back around to where it was originally. And basically flipped what I just said, and that's also what input B does. So if you don't even understand what I just said, I would highly recommend just downloading the map because that's the only other way I can put it. Um, I've tried to put it in words multiple times and I've just ended up deleting those recordings because they sound like a bunch of gibberish and you can't understand anything that I'm talking about. So if you've got any questions, be sure to leave them down in the, the comment section below because I will always do my best to answer them. Um, so there's probably going to be some questions that I can't answer, but like I said, I will do my best to uh, get get you guys understanding what I'm actually talking about here. So this, I'm not doing a tutorial on how to put this together or anything because like I said, it's overly complicated and it's just unnecessary to be this big and this uh, this complex. But it's it's an example that I wanted to show off because it, it shows off multiple, uh, multiple concepts. I don't know if I did it this way, but you can also go with input B first if you wanted to do it that way. Um, and so what, with input B right there, it just switched this one to the left so whenever this minecart hits that diverter it will go to the right and go straight to trigger the output so input b has returned input a has just been clicked and as you can see we've got ourselves an output now that both of them have been triggered so that's just the basics of the and gate being blown up a little bit so you guys can sort of see what's happening so that has been the video i wanted to make it a little bit short i don't know how what my time is but that has been that um, I just wanted to sort of scratch the surface of what's going on with self-resetting logic gates in my next video. Unless you guys want to see something different, which you can tell me down in the comment section. Um, unless you want something different, I will just cover the AND gate, OR gate, and the NOT gate. Or I might split them up if I feel like I'm cramming too much into one video for you guys to understand. So, that has been that. Maybe your minds are blown just a little bit. I don't really know, but it was really complex and really complicated and super hard for me to describe. So I'm just going to stop right there. If you enjoyed this video, if you liked it or didn't understand it, if you understood it or didn't understand it, I don't know, whatever your um, honest opinions and ratings of this video, let me know by giving me a like or not a like on this video and comment any questions down in the comment section and I will be sure to get back on you with what I feel is necessary to answer. So that has been that and I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day.